Hello, in this video I will demonstrate how to create a custom joint using the IC3 steel. I have a sample frame here and I want to insert a plate between the column and the beam in this location. I'm going to create a part and sketch my plate. Just add a couple of dimensions here. This is going to be my driving dimension. And I want to uh, make another dimensions linked to this one. So for example, this is going to be two times more than my driving dimension. Finally, I'm going to extrude this for 6 mm, which is the thickness of my plate. Now let's add the holes. I will be using IC3D steel joint feature to propagate this cut extrude uh, into the assembly level. I will add the second direction to the cut to make it easier for me uh, to bring this to assembly level. I would also change the th thickness of the cut to be two times more than the thickness of the plate. Let's add some ICCG steel smart join features. I'm going to the SOLIDWORKS menu, ICCG steel, joints, define joints, and it brings me joints builder property manager page. I can define mates, cutouts, some configurations to make the joints smart. Let me create my first mate, which is going to be a coincident for this uh, face. I just want to select this face, go to Mates properties, and similar to SOLIDWORKS Mates, I can just specify some parameters such as type and also the default alignment. I also want to give uh, this mate some reasonable name. I will also add a couple of symmetry mates to align my plate with the column. IC3 still is using a moment of inertia to add the proper symmetry mate. In this case, I want to align my z-axis with the long side of the plate and my y-axis with the short side of the plate. Let me now modify my mate. I'm selecting this one and just scrolling down to select my reference entity. In this case, I'm going to use the top plane, which is along the long side of the plate change the type and also specify the align axis which is that and just want to rename this selection to something like a column and now I'm just going to add another mate which is also a symmetric mate but in this case I will be using a short side and basically I should be aligned to y axis and I will be using the right plane here Second mate is going to be aligned with the same column as the previous mate. So instead of recreating the selection, I will just drag this selection to link it. We can now add our part to IC3D steel joints library. I need to call the add edit library item from the IC3D steel menu. Some fields are already predefined, but I can change them if I want to. I can select a standard or specify a new one and I can specify the type which is the name of my joint. Let's name it plate. And just hit the green tick and ICG still will do the rest. Let's bring our assembly and try to insert this joint. Uh, I actually did a mistake so I put my plate into the beam to beam section but it's clearly the beam to column. But I can just click right mouse button on a menu item and it will open uh, the location in file explorer and I can just copy paste the file so it's now moved to another section 
To insert my join, I need to click in SolidWorks Graphics area and then specify the references selections as defined in a joint. So you can see that the joint now positioned correctly. And three mates are added, two symmetric and one coincident, as I have specified in the joint definition property manager page. Let's modify our joint to be a bit more intuitive as well as add the cutouts in the assembly. So let me go back to my file. I just browse it from the library and come back to join the definition dialog. And under the mates, I could just go to properties and can specify some attributes such as title. I just name it beam face and also I can browse for the image which will help the users to insert my joint. I can do the same for my second mate. I can also specify the selection filters to help a user make a proper selection. For this one I will just set it to body. Let's now add two cutouts. The first one needs to trim my column. So I want to select this sketch to be the profile of my cutout and similar to others, I can just specify the conditions of the cutout. So firstly I want to specify the scope. So in this case I put one which corresponds to the second component I am selecting. So as you remember I am firstly selecting the beam and then I am selecting the column body. So I want this cut to be only applied to this column. Let's create a second cutout, which are my holes propagated to a beam. In this case, I will just select the cut extrude feature and won't be specifying any options. And IC3 still will just pick up the option from the SOLIDWORKS feature. Let's bring our assembly and test the connection. Now I want to hold the SHIFT key to automatically propagate the first selection as my reference entity. So like in this case you can see that it's already in a box. If I move the mouse over this icon it shows me the zoomed preview of what needs to be selected. Let's now click OK and you can see that there are two holes uh, inserted and my beam is cut to fit my plate. Let me show you one extra thing which IC3D still brings to SOLIDWORKS users. I want to insert the fasteners into these joints, but instead of creating the geometry, I will be using the IC3D steel virtual fasteners. I can just select the size for these fasteners, M16, and select where I want to place my bolt. And under the fastener stop, you can see there are two bolts now in this joint. Let's come back to our assembly and insert this joint into the four locations here. Please note, I can just select multiply joints in one go, like in this case. I'm just clicking uh, on four locations using the shift key and it inserts four joints to me. I can easily just jump through my joints to specify the second selection, which is a column for all joints. Uh, for some joints, you see, I need to make an um, adjustment to rotate them approximately so they align it properly. Alright, now I hit a green tick and four joints are going to be inserted. If I switch to virtual fastener stop, you can see there are now eight uh, fasteners inserted into this model. And I could export this uh, to a CSV file to be opened in an Excel. Finally, I could apply some mark numbers to my elements. So my column is going to be a C mark, my beam is going to be a B mark, and my plates going to be a PL mark. So in this case, uh, I can just rename it to PL1 and just reassign the name here so it comes with a 1. So I have B1, C1, EPL1. So and now if I export uh, my bolt list, you can see that the mark number is picked up and it shows where this fastener is going. You notice that we are using the hard-coded values uh, 75 to drive our plate. What if I want to make it flexible, so whenever I'm inserting the plate it picks up the size of my column. If I go to the properties of my column, you can see there are several custom properties assigned to the profile, such as description, uh, size, etc. In this case, I'm going to use a name to property, which corresponds to the second part of the description of a profile, 
and it also corresponds to the width of my column. Let's go and modify our joints to change the driving dimension according to the column size. But before I do that, I just want to change the name of my driving dimension to be a bit more user friendly. So I can just select it here and give it another name such as SHS size at sketch 1 and copy this to the clipboard. IC3D Steel Joints Builder functionality provides a powerful feature called Configurator. And you can specify the additional dialogues where your user can specify options. You can also uh, set up uh, Excel-like rules for driving your joint. In this case, I'm adding the reference selection, which is uh, my column where I want to grab uh, the value of property. So in the placeholders, I can just select the selection property and just specify two fields, the property name, which is name 2, and the selection name, which I just created, which is a call underscore body. So this is uh, will be equals to my property value. The only thing I need to do is actually convert this to the number. On the right hand side, I could specify the output rules, such as uh, assign the value to my dimension. All dimensions values should be specified in meters. Because I'm using the millimeters at the moment, I need to divide by 1000 to convert to meters. Let's reinsert those four joints. Okay, let's now change the sizes of the columns. I will be using the Edit Members tool from IC3D Steel, just selecting four columns. And I just want to select a new profile size. So in this case, I'm going to use a 89 SHS. And under the Editing Options, make sure that you remove the Retain Original Position and Section. And just hit a green tick. All the columns have changed their size. You can see it's here. You can see, but from that side, you see that actually uh, it's switched to another side. So I can just select and change the insertion point just very quickly. So on my columns, back to normal now. As you have noticed, uh, joints are not uh, adjusted to a new column sizes. IC3D still is not supporting the automatic joints adjustments at the moment but all the joints are purely standard solidworks part so you can just go to the joint and modify the dimensions to adjust uh, your size as you can see in this case all my joints resized correctly thank you for your time